Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Keep world back. and they that dwell therein. Psalm 50 verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Have I, have I let me see. Haggai. Haggai. Haggai 2 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. First Kings 17 4 to 9. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Somebody say, feeding, say to feeding, to sustenance, and to abundance. Say before sustenance, comes feeding. And before abundance comes sustenance. Now here was a situation where the prophet Elijah had prophesied and as a result of his prophetic declaration, there was famine in the land. And God said, now keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. And tell, turn to somebody right now. Tell them God always has a brook, a raven, and a widow of Zarephath. For you, before abundance. Put your hands together for that. So the first thing was, God said, I'm going to feed you by the brook. Now, the danger here is, most times, because God has done it in a particular way over the years, and we are used to God meeting our needs, in a particular way or manner, we build this perception and have a mentality and an attitude that God will continue to do it the same way. But God is God all by himself. And God decides how to meet our needs. He decides how to meet our needs. And this time God did not use an eagle. He didn't use an eagle, nor a dove. He used a bird, unclean bird, raven. And if you study the raven, there's a lot of interesting things. You must take time after lunch and study the raven. When I looked at it, I said, God, you use the raven to feel the prophet. And that is God. He chooses to do what he pleases. We can tell him how to meet our needs. He does it his own way. Somebody say, I hear you. So he said to the prophet, go by the brook. And I don't know what you are facing in these difficult times in the history of this country and in the history of the nations of the world. There is problem of food security, farming and scarcity. I remember doing the 1983. T things were tough. There was farming in this country. We used to queue for yellow corn and yellow kenke. It was so difficult and tough. And a friend of mine from Canada came to visit me and he took me to have dinner with the, the then Canadian High Commissioner. So we became friends. And because things were difficult in town, there was nothing around in those days. Every month, he had a CD car and would drive across the border to Lome, stay there for a few days and would shop bring everything that was needed for one man to Ghana. So every month he would call me and he said, Nick, we got to go. And he would pick me up. I used to live at the airport residential area. He would pick me up and we'll go to Lome and he would give me money. And I used to save my own money and we'll go down and we'll shop, fill the tank with things to keep us for a month. And he had so much provision. I have so much provision and 
I had things that you couldn't find in Ghana in those days. We brought it into town and I was enjoying like he was enjoying as a diplomat. And he was a diploma of a nation. I was a diploma of the kingdom of the most high God. Are you hearing me, somebody? He was an ambassador for the nation of Canada. I was an ambassador of the most high. The provision I had came from him, but God has to use him to provide. And who God uses is God's own business. That is none of my business. I came to announce to somebody that within this time of scarcity, God has a raven. God has a brook. God has a widow of Zarifa for you. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Somebody say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. There are two realities. God's reality, man's reality. You either believe or you don't believe. There is no middle ground. And I hear me, ladies and gentlemen, the times we live in, who show who are true believers and who are fake believers. Because if you are a true believer, you have no other choice but to put on your seat belts. It's a time of turbulence. You got to put on your seat belt and you got to sit down tight and put on your seat belt. It will hold you together. And it's just a matter of time. We'll pass through the turbulence and things will be okay. Are you hearing me? If you're a believer, you got to put on your seatbelt. You got to be in the word of God like never before. Is the word or nothing? Say yes. So stop telling me how bad things are. I feel it too. I feel it. You know, I said it in the first service. It is said that when the rich catch cold, the poor get pneumonia. And these are, these are tough times. The rich are catching cold and the poor are getting pneumonia. You know? But that is the reality, physical reality. But spiritual reality says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Put your hands together. Say yes. You see, these are not the days to withhold. These are not the days to be selfish. These are not the days to hold back. And I'll tell you why. Every embassy in this country, and most embassies, it doesn't matter what's going on with our currency and our present situations or circumstances. They are not paid by our currency. Their salary is not determined by the wages of Ghana. They are paid from a different wage. And their supply doesn't come from Ghana. It comes from outside Ghana. If men, evil as they are, and nations, unstable as they are, know how to take care of their own, how much more your heavenly Father which is in heaven? Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. You know, when... When I was coming from the U.S., I went to London with Rosa for a few days. And there's this very nice hotel around where we live in London, the apartment where we live. So we took a walk, beautiful day, and it's a very quiet place, and you don't find people like us there. The food is very good. And so we went in there, we ordered, we sat, we ate, we were talking. And after a while, I said to the lady, please bring the check and so we can pay. And she said, uh, someone has paid for you. And I said, someone like who? He said, I'm sorry, I don't know them. They just paid your bill for you and they've left. And it happens to us all the time. There's a nice hotel in Virginia um, called Seasons around a place called Tyson's Corner. And I've been there with Rosa a few times. They have very healthy food. And we finish eating and we call for the bill and they'll say, somebody has paid for your bill. It has happened to us a few times. Somebody paid for the bill. When, when we're coming to London, I didn't, I didn't have any uh, cash on me, but I have credit cards. And I don't really like using credit card because the name itself, I don't like it, credit. So uh, 
I was raised, I was raised in Ghana, so we are not used to credit. Rosa, them, Rosa, as for her, she understands credit card better than I. Me, I don't understand credit card. I just pay and I'm, I'm a free man. This thing where you use the card and they come, they start slapping you with bills every, I'm not used to that. You know, I just want to pay cash. Say cash. Yeah, yeah, I have my freedom. Uh, I'm used to that. So anyway, when we're leaving, she said, oh, you have, you have some uh, money with me. And I said, I'll spend everything. She said, no. So she gave me the envelope and it was money I had with it. I've even forgotten. So when I got to London, I had some cash, you know, on me to spend, to do so many things. And it was a lot of cash, you know, to, to, to spend around and, and do whatever I wanted to do. And, and it's just amazing how God provides. Like, wise was in America, um, one of my sons, one of the prophets called me and he said, Papa, uh, one of your sons wants to come and see you. I said, let them come. So they drove for over four hours to come see me. And when they came, they said, Papa, we came to Ghana to see you to put a seed on your feet because the Lord spoke to us uh, to bring you a seed. But when we came to Ghana, we were told you have traveled to America. And uh, when we called, we found out you are here. So we decided to bring the seed. And they, they put a seed on my feet. And it was a heavy seed, heavy. You know? And, 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 and God bless me. J just yesterday, I had a call from another country. I mean, I incredible, very interesting. And one of my... Uh, bishop, he said, Papa, uh, there's a, some uh, businessman and woman here. They've been following your ministry and they, they want to send a seed, heavy. And uh, we want to know where to send it to. So I told them where they should send it to. You know, and just after the first service, I had a text. I had a text. And he said, Papa, uh, I just transferred some money into your account. You know? And look at me. When uh, I'm saying all of this, I'm not boasting, but I want you to know that God does provide. I'm telling you. And before, before, before I travel, uh, one of the young men in my house came to me and said, somebody brought me a package, uh, one of my tailors, and I said, bring it. And it was what I was wearing, a lot of them. And he said, oh, he brought it to you for impact. And I said, did he bring a bill? He said, no, he didn't bring any bill. So I said, okay, send it to laundry, keep it there, approve it, and I'll use it. So this morning I got up and I said, I'm not going to wait for impact, it's now. <laughs> Somebody say, look at God, look at God, look at God. Somebody say, look at God. You know, I'm, I'm saying all of this to encourage you, to let you know that the God you and I serve is faithful. And that God does take care of his people. <clears throat> you know, there are Americans who live in this country, some in our church here. And they may have difficulties and challenge. They will go to the American embassy, and the embassy will not give them money to go and rent a house. The embassy won't buy them a car and say, I'm sorry, we can't help you. But the staff of the embassy, the American government, takes care of the accommodation, gives them a car, and gives them security. They are all citizens of America. Why is one taken care of and the other not taken care of? Because the ones at the embassy, they are working and committed to the interests of the United States of America. The rest are here on their own. So you can be a believer, born again, Holy Ghost filled, and still lack and still not have supernatural provision because you are selfish, you are self-centered, you are holding back, you are hoarding, you are afraid, you are thinking about security, and you are not committed to God's business and to God's cause and to the kingdom and to the ministry. He said in Matthew 6, 31 to 33, he said, seek ye first his kingdom and all these things shall be added unto you. So God doesn't just supply everybody's need. He supplies the needs of those who are committed to his business. No matter what the situation is, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes.